Okay, so what we're going to be talking about is electron configuration notation. So in here, we're going to go ahead and draw. We're going to draw this. Uh, this is the last time, hopefully, you'll ever draw one of these, unless you need to. So I'm going to do this. Is, remember, this is energy level. So I'm just going to put E and L to represent energy level. Is that on the periodic table? Hmm? The energy levels are on the periodic table, right? That, those are the rows that they're in. So hydrogen's in row one, so it's an energy level one. Huh? I want you to put it in your notes. Okay? So energy level. So the first, the first we're going to look at, we're going to look at beryllium. Again, we've already looked at beryllium before, but here's BE. Yep. It has atomic number nine. Nine and four. Very good. Yeah. This should be the last one of these you ever have to draw, though. So beryllium has an atomic mass of nine and an atomic number of four. It has four electrons then that it can use to fill up its orbitals around the nucleus. So we start off based upon the alpha principle at the 1s. Remember, there's only one orbital that can have two electrons in it. So there's one room on the first floor that can have two electrons. So we put one in there, one going up, one going down. Then we fill up the 2s with one going up and one going down. Now we need to find a way to write this to where we don't have to put this huge diagram on a piece of paper every time. There has to be a way that we can write this and make it more condensed. So the way we write this is we start off by writing the first principal energy level, which is the 1. Then we write the orbital, which is the s. And then it's squared because why? Because there's two what? Two electrons, yes. Okay, so 1s2. How many electrons are represented there? Well, there are four in this, in this atom, so we've got to represent more because right now we're only showing two in the 1s. So what do we need to write next? 2s squared. 2s squared or 2s2. Okay? So you want to write in your notes, first of all, that this represents the energy level. Okay? Energy level. The first, the big coefficient there, the big number, represents the energy level. The letter represents the orbital. And the number at the top represents the number of electrons. Okay. I'll send right down there right now. Okay. So we've got, uh, hey, Michael. Michael, would you go in there and find a document camera that's sitting on the system? It's black. Just find a document camera. Take it down to Mr. Oster's, please. Okay. Uh, so now we've got this electron. We call this, once again, we call this electron. And I might have to erase some things here. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Nice. She was listening. <laughs> I mean, he did say it. Yeah. Be nice. I am recording this, by the way, but not with your, with your uh, only voices. And the video is going to be online, so you can actually go home and watch this as I'm doing it in here right now. So, like, I'm... Wait, where are you recording? Like, on here? Yeah. I'm recording what I'm doing up there, on here, and the voices. So... If, if we play, so your 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 raspy talk is gonna be on here very well. And I post I posted to YouTube. What does raspy mean? Scratchy. Oh my gosh. There we go. And that's how it starts. All right. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Find it. That's it. Thank you. All right. Now they're taking something down to Mr. Oster's. Okay. So we've got this electron configuration notation. What I want you to try now is I want you to try and write down the one for oxygen. So I'm going to clear this off. Don't have 10 electrons. Oxygen doesn't have 10 electrons. I mean, eight. It has eight. Okay. Electron configuration notation. Did you make your own elements, Mr. Marshall? Though? Did I make my own? Yeah. No, but what I did was I put the, uh, notice up here on, the, on this periodic table, I put the orbitals up there for you. So every column, it, you know which orbital it is. Isn't that handy? Yep. 
Okay, so we've got... Here's our energy level. Okay, here's our energy level. Now remember we're talking about oxygen. We write the atomic symbol as this. Okay. So 18 and 9. And then we've got to... We've got to determine how many electrons we had, and somebody I think already I shared with us. Eight. Well, you said 18 and 9. I, you're right. I'm so sorry. 18. Apology accepted. Oh, it's actually, those are wrong. It's 16 and 8. There we go. There we go. Sorry, sorry. Thank you for, cor thank you for correcting me. So we got the 1s. It's got uh, one orbital. Then we got the 2s. It has one orbital. Then we've got the 2p. And it has three orbitals. Do you want a worksheet on this? Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Would you rather talk about it? I don't understand it. Huh? You don't understand this? Look at your periodic table map, right? The one that you drew in class. That periodic table map directs you on how to fill this out. So we go from 1s1 to 1s2, okay? Just like you did in your, in your map, that periodic table map that we made. Huh? Well, one more thing after, we, after you practice this, yes. How did I know to put three here? Yes. Because when you look at the P block, the P sub level, remember there's two electrons for every per orbital. Room. So for per room, two electrons per room per orbital. So you have six electrons. So if you have two per electron or two per orbital or two per room, and you got six total, if you take six and divide it by two, what do you have? Three. 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 So there's one, two, three. Uh, well, what's your question? Does that not quite answer it for you? No. Okay, look how many this represents. One, two, three, four, five, six. When you look from boron to neon, okay. there's six there. <coughs> Do you see that? So that tells me that, and if I have two per, per orbital, or per room, I have two people per room. One here, one here, one there. <laughs> it would go, yeah, it would go S, P, and then you've got the three S, and then you just keep on going. I have a question. BC. Oh yeah, BC. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. You put the on two P. You just put the arrow, the up arrows first. Yes, that's Hun's rule. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill this out uh, because Mr. Lineham is right. He was saying, so we got to fill this in like so. Up, down. Up, 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 and then down. There's oxygen. Okay. So there's our structure for oxygen based upon. Based upon Hans' rule. Okay, make sure you're paying attention. All right, Hans' rule tells us. Yes. No, no, no. Orbitals are essentially around the nucleus. You know those rings around the nucleus that you saw that we've talked about? Remember in that building the atom? You don't remember that at all. You weren't here to build the atom either. But on the computer simulation that we did, when you remember when we started building the atom and there were these things, you remember looking at the Bohr model? When we did that simulation, you weren't here for that either. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> so you've missed a lot of days, Mr. Uh, Hanley. Uh, but orbitals are essentially around the nucleus are these electrons. And we're trying to figure out where they exist around the nucleus. And this tells us exactly where they are. Are those like out of space? Uh, well, in the atom inside of you, uh, you, you contain atoms. And in those atoms are protons, neutrons, and electrons. The electrons go around the nucleus that contains protons and neutrons. So those electrons, wherever they are, is based upon this. Okay, so let's try and write this in terms of electron configuration notation. So we've got the 1s2, 2s2, 2p, 2p4. Can you push the, just that? What are these codes? Huh? What is them codes? Codes? This? So this is 1s2. There's two electrons. And that orbital? You're going to have to come and talk. You missed two days worth of information, so you're going to have to come and see me. You're going to have to come and see me. I, I know you missed it, but, you know, we'll have to talk about it. I know. Yes? So basically what you're doing is you're flying. Hey, I can't hear Miss uh... <laughs> Chrissy. What? It's your name. Don't get mad at me about it. Don't get mad at your parents. That's not my name. I'm pretty sure, but anyway, move on. Anyways. Huh? Yes. That's right. That's right. 
Oh, I can have it. Okay. Yes. Why is there two? Because Hun's rule says we've got to put it up arrow in each orbital first. That's Hun's rule. Okay. And then we put a down arrow in. Okay. Miss Owens, can you get with us? No. Two, three. I can tell. One, two, three, four, okay, and the 2P4. So now we need to talk about this last thing we're going to talk about today, and the last thing on our word wall that I've added for today is this thing, this concept of valence electrons, Mr. Uh, Davidson. This concept of valence electrons. So what I want you to think about... Let's write this down. Yes. Okay, Sorry. valence electrons. That's fine. It's my fault. Uh, valence electrons... <sighs> no, I'm just, I'm just writing it up here for me. Yes, please write it down. Sorry, why would I write it up here if I didn't want you to write it down? No. I want you to write it down, yes. Please excuse my sarcasm, but please write it down. Okay, valence electrons. Are electrons that occupy... The highest principle I think it's LE energy level. And what that means is IE energy levels one, two oh that's not a two, is it? <laughs> two. Three. For instance. An example. An example. Yes, very good. Okay. Energy levels one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Okay? So when we're talking about, uh, and I'm going to go back and we're going to look at oxygen real quick. And we're going to try and figure out the valence electrons uh, that exist for, uh, for oxygen. You want me to do it? Yep. Nice. Uh, so, for example, when we're talking about uh, oxygen, let's go back and look at oxygen real quick. So here's oxygen. Okay, this is our notation for oxygen. What is the highest energy level? Is it one or two? One. Sixteen. Which one? Uh, one is higher than two? Wait, hold on. Two, two, two right? Two. Two, is higher, two is higher than one. Okay. How? 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 Yeah. How? What? You don't, know that, you don't know why two is higher than one? <laughs> if you're counting, two is followed, one is followed by two, right? If you're talking about floors in a building, Trail. two is higher up than one, yes? Trail. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there are two twos there. That's true. Okay, and we're going to talk about that. But still, still, two is higher than one. So, but but now, Chrissy, Chrissy is correct. There are, there are two of them. So we do have to take that into account. So we have a two here and a two here. How many electrons are in the second energy level? Four. Nah, the two p is not higher than two s. They're still in the second energy level. So they're both on the same floor. They're just different rooms. Yeah. So there's six valence electrons in oxygen. Okay. Because they're both in the second energy level. They're just in different orbitals, but they're still in the second energy level. Do you understand that? Okay. So the valence electrons for oxygen equal six. Can you go back to that? The definition. There you go. Did he get it? Oh, really? He's going to give me his smart document camera? Uh, yeah. Oh. The one you just gave him was jank. I know. It's old school. Jank. Jank. All right. So, yeah, probably. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to look at that table that you put in your lab notebook. So go ahead and flip to that. Now remember, there is a column that says valence electrons. Now you can fill that out. And I'm going to show you how. So first of all, let's look at fluorine. Let's look at fluorine. All right, so here's fluorine. The first one that you got on that table. It has an atomic number of 19. I'm sorry, it has an atomic number of 9. Sorry. And it's got an atomic mass of 19. Okay. So when we fill out this, you know, if we were to fill out the electron configuration or the uh, orbital diagram, it would look like this. Now, some of you may need to continue to do this until you can begin to look at the periodic table and know where those things are, and that's okay. So every time we look at the valence, we gotta do that You don't have to do this table every time. You may be able to look on the periodic table and say, okay, I see that that's in row two. Where's the 
And then that it's P5. I so, that. yeah, so you can do it that way. Okay, but if you want to do it this way, just to remember, you can. Huh. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Man. Yes. Um, energy levels. Uh-huh. That's energy level, right? These right here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, you should know them. So, what is, so what are the highest, what's the highest energy level? One or two? Two. Well, let's write, let's write out the, uh, the shorthand or the electron configuration notation. So, what is it? 2p, 2p squared, 2p5, 2p5, 2 to the fifth power. Okay, how many electrons do we have in the highest energy level? Five. Not two. quite. Two. Nope. Five. Nope. Six. Nine. Four. Seven. 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 <laughs> All right, seven. Because, look, the second energy level, right? They're both, now look, I understand you think that this is the only one because it's up here. But this is the energy level. They're both in the second energy level. Yes. Okay. So there's two and five. So the valence electrons are seven. Okay. So can you do an example up here? I just did the first one for you. <laughs> the charge we're not going to talk about yet. I want you to understand the valence electrons first. Do you want me to do the next one? Yes. Yes. And we're going to talk about that next week. Okay. So we understand valence electrons. Okay, or we're getting there. Let's talk about the next, uh, the next one on there. Uh, potassium. potassium. What is potassium on the periodic table? K. K. Okay, so we're going to look at K. 3919. 39, it would be one. Very good. It would be one. Well, let's look at it just in case some people are a little confused. Okay. How's that apple that you're eating in my class? Dang, crunch. That was that noise was. Don't continue to eat it. Can you eat it? No. That's in my class. If you like to eat the whole apple, but you would like it because he wasn't even talking to you. Oh my. Little bro. He just got him. I'm big, bro. You little bro. My, me? Yeah. Come on now. I, I got 100 pounds on you easy. I don't call nobody big, bro. I always no. call him little, bro. Why is that? Because it's... Mm. <laughs> I'm bigger than you. What are you talking about? Prove it. I prove it. Look at you. Look at you. Let's, what are you talking about? You sound stupid. Why are you... Look, you're both a few electrons short of a full orbital, if you know what I'm saying. A little bit bigger than... A little... Okay. okay. Did, you, did you laugh at my joke, Miss King? Hey. No. Hey. You don't want to find out. Hey. Mr. Davidson, hey, Mr. Davidson, stop. Hey. You said you from Cali, you from Cali don't mean nothing, bro. You need to stop. Real tall. Nah, bro, because he's getting on my nerves. He thinks he's hard just because he's from Cali, bro. I don't even know what that means. Bro, you act like that, bro. Sick. 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 You, you want to go with that? Yeah, I know you don't want to go with that. I should have I decided on a different class to record for. This might be a problem. Oh, <laughs> All right. I wish I could. I'll try. I might have to. Def I might have to define some unknown slang terms on here for people when they're watching it, but that's okay. Like, no, there are three rules that you have to follow, and I'll give them to you. Okay. The Alfbau principle, the Pauli exclusion principle, and the Huns rule. I know the Huns rule. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. I don't think they will. I don't think they will. All right, so how many electrons do we have in the highest energy level? Four. Push the... Oh, you got it. Huh? Not four. Four S. One. 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 One, right? And what is the... Now, if you were to write the shorthand for potassium, it's going to be one S2. Two S2. Two P6. Three S2. 3p6, 4s1. So the valence is 1? The valence electrons in potassium is 1. This one? Okay, that's why I got 1. Mm -hmm, that's why I got 1. Got filled it in and I got 1. Okay. Now, you don't have to go through this entire process. You can look at the periodic table and say, okay, look at potassium. 
It's in the four. And look at the top of that column. What does it say up there? One. S1. One. Do you see that? I put, those, I put those up there for you so you can tell. It's in the 4S1. Isn't that easy? Make life easier for you? Yes. Yeah, see? I know. I know. See? Makes life a lot easier. All right? So uh, that's how you do valence electrons. Your homework for this weekend is to fill in the valence electrons for every element on that chart. Does anybody else need a copy of that chart? There's only, uh, no, only on that chart. On what chart? This one. All right, look right here. This chart right here, you need to fill in the valence electrons for. The one I had you staple in your lab notebook. Yes. Because 4S is before the 3D. You see that up there? The D doesn't happen until you get to scandium. 